Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and we have the privilege today of being out at the range with a Finnish captured, Finnish army uh, marked Soviet DS-39 heavy machine gun. This was supposed to be the gun that would replace the Maxim in Soviet military service and give them a much lighter weight, more mobile, more modern belt-fed machine gun. It didn't work out quite that way, though. Uh, I have a full video on the history and the mechanics and the problems of the DS-39, so if you haven't seen that, you should definitely check it out, because today we've got it out of the range to actually do some shooting. So let me show you what I have done to load the belt. Lift the top cover up, and then we have a rotary feed slide here. So I'm going to take my belt, I'm going to set the first round right there, and then I will rack it once to pull this round up here, dry fire it, which will drop the bolt on, and the extractor hooks here will pick up this round, and then I'll rack it a second time, which will pull this round out of the belt and make it ready to fire. So this should be a dry fire to pick up the cartridge. And then that makes us hot and ready. Well, that's super easy to shoot. That thing hardly bounces at all on its tripod. This is really nice and pleasant to shoot. All right, now, we're going to try an experiment. We're going to change the gas port and the buffer, and we should be able to bump the rate of fire up. So we're going to take that and push it over and take my rear buffer, push it in and rotate it. We went ahead and stuck a cardboard box under the end of the belt because the belt's quite oily and we didn't want it to pick up all the dirt on the ground. So let's get this back loaded. And here we go. <laughs> that is definitely faster. So that's the anti-aircraft mode. And once again, for comparison, open this, push that back. This is the slower infantry mode. It is really interesting to be able to see that much of a difference in the rate of fire in the gun. Um, we've had a couple little issues here so far, uh, a couple feed jams. Um, I actually probably should have gotten some footage of them, but uh, you can definitely see at the same time both why the Russians were enthusiastic enough about this gun to put it into production, and also why under field conditions, despite the fact that the, the, the initial testing went really well, once this gun got into the field in the Winter War, it proved to have serious problems. And you can kind of see the harbingers of that as well. Um, so let's do some more shooting. It also occasionally runs away like that, which would normally be a lot more worrisome than it is when it's sitting on a very stable tripod like this. The tripod's not only relatively light compared to a traditional, typical, like a 1910 Maxim mount, but like, I'm really not, I mean, mechanically it's not a good thing that the gun runs away, but I have no safety concerns about it as far as controlling the gun. So I think we have had one last lock up because one of the cartridges is not quite exactly at the right depth in the belt. So uh, let me fix that and then we'll just run the last only about 10 rounds left. Yep, that's, that's what it was. The round was a bit shallow. Yuri, please bring hammer. <laughs> I 
Nie je problém, normálna katastrofa. Kýtos? Fixed. All right. We're gonna go to high mode instead of slow mode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. These are fantastically rare guns that exist virtually nowhere outside of Finland. And it's really been a privilege to have the opportunity to take this one out and actually do some shooting with it. So thank you very much for watching. <laughs> oh. Oh. There you go, I think we're done. Let's try that. Okay, let's try it one more time. Wait, we're back. We're back. Last try. Here we go. Last, last try. There we go.